from Studio 113 in Walson Hall. This is NBC News. Hi, and welcome to NBC News. We're your hosts, Katie Mitchell. And I'm Alyssa Kratz. So Katie, how was your Thanksgiving break? It was great. I got to sleep, even though I had some homework to do, and I saw a ton of family, ate That's a lot of nice. good food. I bet. How was yours? It was good. Um, did a lot of work also. Saw the Eagles lose, which oh, was pretty right. disappointing. <laughs> but Thanksgiving dinner definitely made up for it. Yes, that's true. Um, good food too always short, does. Too short, too <laughs> short. Um, but we're in the final stretch now, getting ready for finals. I know, it's crazy. Three weeks left of the semester. <laughs> it's crazy, but you want to tell us what's going on in the news this week? Would love to, Alyssa. Let's check out the latest Berg news. It has been reaffirmed by Moody's Investor Service that Muhlenberg College's A1 rating on its Series 2009 college revenue bonds, which mature in 2039, still stands strong. This A1 rating is reflective of the strength of Muhlenberg's unrestricted liquidity position and incorporates Muhlenberg's consistent and healthy operating performance. Moody's has concluded that the financial outlook for the college appears stable. Some big news here. Neuroscience will officially become the 19th academic department of Muhlenberg College at the beginning of the 2016 to 2017 academic year. This nationally recognized major will become the first new academic department since the 1980s when theater and dance became a department. This transition will push Muhlenberg to the forefront of undergraduate liberal arts neuroscience programs, as Oberlin College and Pomona College are the only other liberal arts schools with a neuroscience department. It's going to be a big weekend for the theater and dance department here at Muhlenberg, with Servant of Two Masters opening on December 3rd and running through December 6th. For the first time ever, a Commedia dell'arte play will appear on the Muhlenberg College main stage. This show takes place in 18th century Venice when Commedia dell'arte was king. This style of theater incorporates masks, stock characters, and comic improvisation, admired by both the nobility and the working class in the Venetian social scene. Carlo Galdoni's Servant of Two Masters is directed by Muhlenberg Theatre Professor Francine Roussel. Tickets and more information can be found online at muhlenberg.edu slash theater or by visiting the box office on campus. Finally, if you haven't checked it out already, be sure to get onto Forbes.com to check out the article featuring our very own President Williams. Written by Matt Simnons, this article discusses the payoff of a liberal arts education. The name of the article is called Five Reasons a liberal arts education rocks. A direct link to the article can be found on Muhlenberg's Facebook page, Twitter page, and college website. Let's take a look outside of the Berg bubble. The public has lost trust in Chicago's police. As a result, Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced the dismissal of the Chicago Police Superintendent, Gary McCarthy, earlier today. This dismissal came after the release of a video which shows an officer fatally shooting a teenager 16 times. The mayor states that it is McCarthy who has become the issue, rather than dealing with the issues head on. According to a new study, there have been 56 arrests in the United States just this year related to ISIS. This number indicates the largest number of terrorism arrests in the United States since September 2001. This continues to be a challenge for the FBI in identifying and monitoring suspects. Law enforcement agencies are starting to rethink tactics in order to better understand how to stop terrorist attacks already underway. Well, that's all we have for the news this week. Now to Alyssa for sports. Thanks, Katie. The Muhlenberg football team season came to an end last weekend with a disappointing 14-9 loss against Stevenson University in the inaugural Centennial Mac Bowl. The Mustangs scored what would be the winning touchdown with 5 minutes and 44 seconds left in the third quarter. While the Mules did fight back, driving down the field and inside the red zone in the game's final minute, they were unable to come up with the touchdown. There were some bright spots for the Mules, especially on defense and special teams. Senior Lenny Smith made nine stops in his last game as a Mule, and junior John Feaster made a game-high 11 tackles. Overall, the Muhlenberg defense gave up only 264 total offensive yards to the Mustangs. The Mules scored their only touchdown of the game with less than a minute left in the first half on an, on an offensive drive which resulted from a blocked punt by junior Gerard Grimes. Senior wide receiver Nick Lamb also shined in his last career game, catching 11 passes for a total of 172 yards. Lamb finished the season with 71 receptions, the second highest total in program history. Finishing with an overall season record of 8-3, the Mules will hold their heads high going into the offseason. 
the Muhlenberg women's basketball team has gotten off to an impressive 3-0 start. Coming off their Scotty Wood Tournament Championship win, the team routed Centennial Conference rival Franklin and Marshall 78-50 last Tuesday. Led by another notable performance from sophomore guard Brandi Vallely, the Lady Mules led by 31 points just 15 minutes into the contest. Vallely, who was named Co-Player of the Week by the Centennial Conference for the second straight week, finished with 16 points, 11 assists, and 10 rebounds against the Diplomats, recording her third triple-double in only four games so far this season. Valley is the first D3 player to record more than two triple-doubles in a season since the NCAA started tracking them in the 2010-2011 season. And the Lady Mule season has only just begun. Senior Christina Santone and freshman Amanda Morello also shined in the Mule's win. Santone picked up a double-double and Morello came close with eight points and nine rebounds in only 13 minutes of playing time. The girls look to continue their winning ways at Haverford tonight and on Saturday at home against Gettysburg. The game on Saturday starts at 2 o'clock in Memorial Hall, so come out and support the team. The Muhlenberg men's basketball team will join the girls at Haverford tonight and will be looking for their first Centennial Conference victory of the season. The men are coming off a thrilling overtime contest against Franklin and Marshall, which unfortunately ended in an 81-78 loss for the Mules. Against the Diplomats, the team was led by junior John Hunter, who finished the game with 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 blocks. Sophomore Nick Rindock also had a great performance, adding 14 points of his own. All five starters scored double digits for the Mules, who are now 2-3 and three on the season. After their trip to Haverford tonight, the men will travel to Gettysburg on Saturday. Tip-off is at 2. This past weekend, the Muhlenberg wrestling team traveled to Madison Square Garden to compete in the Grapple at the Garden tournament for the second straight year. Against Oswego State, the team came out strong, winning their first three matches but ended up dropping the overall contest 31-13. Freshman Patrick Sockler started the Mules off on a high note, taking down his opponent at 133. Sockler scored three takedowns and added a penalty point in the closing seconds of the match, coming away with the 8-6 decision and his fourth straight win. Sophomore Ben Peck and freshman Robert Armas followed Sockler with wins of their own at 141 and 149. Unfortunately, the Mules dropped their last six bouts, giving Oswego State the victory. The team will travel to Grantham, Pennsylvania this weekend for the Messiah PetraFest Invitational. That's all for this week in sports. Now let's go over to Kevin for this week's weather report. Thanks, guys. All right, so this week in weather on Thursday, it's going to be a partly cloudy day. High 49, low 33, chance of rain about 20%. Friday, mostly sunny day, a high 50, low 29, chance of rain about 10%. Coming in on Saturday, it's going to be a sunny day of a high of 51, a low of 20, no chance of rain, which is going to carry over to Sunday, which is also going to be Saturday, sunny as all heck. A high of 53 and a low of 32 is going to mark that day. And coming in on Monday, it's going to be a mostly sunny day, a high of 52, a low of 32, and a chance of rain at 20%. In the rain, it's going to come in on Tuesday, high 50, low 35. And hopefully it ends th just that day, because on Wednesday, it's going to just be cloudy, high 52, low 35, and only a 20% chance that the rain carries on. That's all for weather. Back to you guys. Thanks, Kevin. That's all for this week in NBC News. I'm Melissa Kratz. And I'm Katie Mitchell. Catch you later, birds.